the rest of the uh, the women's rumble uh, stuff. There's only one other place to go, <laughs> and it's JP's own <laughs> personal Emma. house, man. <laughs> and we got the answer, JP, to the question: What is a pitch black match? And it turns out it's just Jeff Hardy's a- entrance, circa uh, TNA, with a bit of a bit of bit of not even black. It's a bit yeah. grey and there's some neon. Um, it's uh, it's Area 15, which is a place I went to when we were out in uh, in Vegas. It's every you know neon disco you've ever been to. It's Right. What was it? It was just. It was a rave story. in the early nineties. <laughs> yeah. I was half expecting some prodigy to be fucking blaring as well, and it would have been more entertaining if Bray Wyatt and LA Knight had taken ecstasy in the middle of the ring in a pitch blank, <laughs> sat around by like some fucking bizarro set of Splatoon, just fluorescent fucking hell is is what I, I thought of this. I did think on the upside, and this might be the only upside. Oh, that that kind of magic pen stuff on Bray, they seem to have put a lot of work into it. To, but, uh, do you know what? I went one star on this, and that is at the high end of Bray Wyatt matches, I've discovered. <laughs> so you liked it then? For me. Yeah, I gave it one out of five. His previous <laughs> efforts, I was looking 0. 0.25, 0. 0.25, 0. 0.5. I might have gone 0. 0.75 once. With his I Helen would point five on this. I don't know what that even means. Like I might as well just go. I don't know. <laughs> He's awful. He's awful, and people need to tell him to shut up. I laughed. I, mm. It was just because it just went to a fucking finish mm. at the end of of all of this. Mm. Like Mountain Dew obviously paid for this. I'm. I would like to think there was an executive from Mountain Dew. They're going. What the fuck is this? I can't see it. It's meant to be about Mountain Dew. Like there's a Mountain Dew thing on the map. You're not really paying like kind of attention to that. What was that fluorescent confetti stuff that was all over the table? I was completely fucking confused. I thought it's just like I don't know, like they've stolen stuff out of the fucking out of the Springfield nuclear power plant or something like that in a little fucking bowl and had it around on the desk. There has to end the match with guest referee Bez. I like that from Yeah. <laughs> it was, and it would have been more fun like that. And if they spent the first few minutes putting Vic's Vapo rub on their back and then fucking losing it to some happy hardcore, it would have been better. It would ex- the ecstasy would explain Uncle Doody's. Mm-hmm. What I could only consider was some sort of suicide dive as I'm gonna lie down next to LA Knight. Here I go. And he just jumped off and landed next to him, clearly nowhere oh, near no. him as well. Which it was, was awful. Well, that's the thing, it, he had, is, it was it was dark defense, and he had a mask. Dark. Yes. And he had the mask on. Like, what, what was he supposed to do? Like, he had no I wish he'd jumped the wrong way because then that would have at least been funny. <laughs> I'd have really laughed at that if he just decided to jump off a complete side bit. Fucking goes horribly wrong, and he just cut away at the end of it. You're like, I don't know what happened there, man. Like, man. Yeah, the chat uh, talking. Uh, is it uh, is Bez? Un- is it Bez that's Uncle Howdy? As this was uh, a hassy end of match. <laughs> it's. Uh... <laughs> Uncle Howdy revealed as Shane O'Mac uh, in the chat there. I've heard that I've heard that a few times you know <laughs> oh. yeah like like Mikey <laughs> sums up here and I was about to launch into Bray Wyatt as a character he's been around for 11 years now like like I I got fooled again like I gotta hold my hands up I I still stand by the fact that it was a good business decision to bring him back because mm-hmm. I was gonna say I was gonna say yeah, there's okay, enough yeah, fiendist, fiendist fans out there that love him and love all of this stuff and buy into all of this stuff, but like they brought him back and he hasn't. What has even happened? Where's the development? Shit. He came back with a bang. We got a great moment, you know, the great new song and you know the the big reveal. And okay, you know what? He was the real life man was was hard done by because he was over. He was making the company money. It was bullshit that they fired him. Like, just from a human point of view, it made no sense. So I was kind of rooting for him to come back and be like, okay, Big Bad Vince has gone as well. So, you know, his unabashed creative vision can be given it, given its own space to breathe. And he can, you know, give us something that make us all, you know, remember those days when he was, you know, the, the early, you know, Wire family days that I did personally enjoy when he was doing Budget Whale and Mercy. But what's he done? He's come back and we've had... Backstage promos confusing Uncle Howdy stuff, and then this shit. Like, yeah. I oh again, almost <laughs> feel sorry for him because this was like 
if you if you are trying to start a you know a, a fresh start with Bray Wyatt or you know turn over a new leaf or not be the letdown this character is constantly is and not be the pure unadulterated wrestle crap that this character has been over the years. Put them in a Mountain Dew presents pitch black match. Like you're going nowhere, are you? Like there's no, you know. Oh, this is like oh, all those great underground horror movie type things. It's not. It's a corporate chill of a match with you know no real hook to it. Because what are you offering? The lights are down a bit, and there's a bit of a luminous going on. And then to add to it, as always with Bray Wyatt, and then the bell rings, and it's a complete shit show. Like this was appalling. This was. It was just it was wrestle crap, is what it was, Matt. It was just Genuinely I don't, I don't think there's, there's any you know, people who's, you know might listen to this who you parachuted in and go, Oh, that Matt is a, a WWE homer, the one who's on there. He loves everything WWE. I can no, tell I you don't. folks what Matty doesn't enjoy the WWE do, <laughs> Bray Wyatt, because yeah, no, what well, even was this? I was like, You Ben, like when he come back and that, as you say, you said it all perfect there. It's like you know, what is going on? Like, no, I'm trying to, like, me and Kiwi, I obviously hate it as well, Ben, but I'm like, we just, I just text him in capitals all the time, Uncle Howdy, because it's like, (laughs) 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 what the fuck is going on? No, it's like, (laughs) no, seriously. How can he reply to that? Like, what is your response when he gets sent out and he's at work? And he's like, (laughs) other than for fuck's sakes. (laughs) Yeah, he just fucking hates it. But as you say, Ben, you, you're rooting for him. I thought he'd come back, you know. I'm not saying he's the greatest wrestler of all time, but, you know, just have proper matches, try and rebuild that thing, as you say. And, like, it's all the same shit all the time. It's going to go back to him and Alexa Bliss, isn't it? You're going to get the Fiend back at some point. <laughs> you know, you're going to get all this shit going on. But as you say, though, Ben, the fans still like him, though. So you are caught in a thing where it's... He is still over though, Ben. He, maybe not as when he come back, but they do react to the song. They do react to him. But as you say, it's when the bell rings, it's silent. It's fucking dead. It's, yeah. it's pin drop stuff. So you're propping in a conundrum. You know, mm. it's it's mad. You know. I, and it's I like, don't even know if you can um, do a wrestling match. Sorry. No, he's never. No, he's never proven it. When he was out to WWE, he never did that thing where I was. Like, you know what would be cool? Send him to Noah. Let him. He's yeah. suppose it like you always say, JP. He's supposedly, yeah. you know, a fan of that style. Go on, go, go, go put your really? mouth where your mouth is. Do it. He's never shown it. And right. the other thing is, like, if these are, if this is, you know, the chat saying there, you know, feed the files will tell you this is cinema and this is deep storytelling. What's the story? What's happened? Literally, it's like yeah. nothing has happened. Like and then, even can now, I... <laughs> coming out of the rumble. Literally, the Uncle Hardy story has still not progressed. There was no big story point. There was no reveal. There was no nothing. It's just the same shit reshuffled and regurgitated. Like we don't even need to talk about the Alexa match because that was sh- its own level of shit. But that oh, match yeah. was still two yeah. stars better than this, despite being its own level of shit. But that's buried in the Uncle Hardy stuff. I thought it was really weird that that followed this rather than went before it. Why would you do? A video from Uncle Hardy if he just basically died in the match before. Why am I trying to analyze it? It's and I'll just what I'm going to say. Uncle Hardy. Uncle Hardy. Uncle Hardy. He's just such a <laughs> years, isn't he? No, but Jimmy, can... I'll, I'll text Kribi that right. But this morning, I'll literally be making the cup of tea before I go to work and I'll just shout to myself, Uncle Hardy. And Steph's like, <laughs> what the fuck are you saying? And even the she calls on Uncle like, Hardy and Cap. <laughs> No, but Benno, you're right. I'm honestly sitting there and I, I'd give up. Like, I, I don't even know why I'm trying. I think, right, this is just Uncle Howdy isn't real. That's what I'm getting. I'm getting it. It's like the Hogan looking at the warrior in the mirror. I think that's in Bray Wyatt's head, but we can all fucking see it. So it doesn't make sense. That's what I, I think. think it's what do do? I think that's the reveal. But Do you think yeah. so? But why? But why it's not? Yes, our dad is on RS. What? Yeah. What, yeah, a, what a twist there. when they throw that one into the mix. Yeah, Mike, can I ask you something? Probably Mike Rotunda so, being in a wheelchair with some fucking mask stolen from Bo Selector in there. JP, I, I don't know. So he's not as good as um, M. Night Shyamalan, who, who, who he thinks he is yet. You're not having that one, no. I, trust me, there is a lot to criticise about M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> if he hasn't done anything like this, not that I'm aware of. And I even watched that one where people turned old in a beach in a day. And that was kind of funny at points. But this is this is pure shit. He is. <laughs> when the bell goes, the fucking the, he is worse than Great Carly in main events. He is. Tell me, the only time 
now at this point. His character has been good. He's in a feud with the Shield, and he said fucking nothing. Said nothing. They stood in a ring. They stared at each other, and they went back, and then they had a fucking... You're the workers, Harry. A decade, the ago. A decade ago. Yeah, yeah, Other yeah. than that, he's shit. As soon as he spoke, and Vince went, supernatural, here we go. Fucking years of this wank, because that's what it is. Fluorescent wank watching this stuff. <laughs> Absolute bollocks of the highest, <laughs> highest order. But I don't know why we're surprised. He's shit. He's always been shit. Yeah. There's no storyline. There's nothing fucking going on here. Every time I watch this, it's like I'm I'm in hell. Like I have to watch this, but this is even worse. The only benefit is is it was over relatively quickly. LA Knight, by the way, got nothing in this. Could have been anyone else, it would have made zero difference. He's in there with someone who's seen as a main event on main event money, and he would have got nothing. From this. I think Bob Bob Holly got more out of a Brock Lesnar match than fucking LA Knight ever did out of this. Beno, Beno, can I just say so I, I don't fa- ben, I don't thank well, you much, but thank you for not putting me in that uh, crowd of people who like this and that I just love anything do the we put on. Thank you for that. No, <laughs> this is it. You surprised me, big world class fan. You know, you're like you're uh, you're, like, you're, 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 you're like thirty. UWF, 30, mate. Bola. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you. And again, if this podcast has proven anything, I'm I'm willing for you know I like re- when wrestling's smart and nuanced. I also can like dumb wrestling. This is beyond that. It's someone trying to be smart and nuanced, and it being even dumber than the dumbest Logan Paul ricochet spot or the dumbest whatever else you want to do in wrestling. Awful, awful shit. Um, yeah, I think we've uh, buried it under the sun. Rev JP, that's what we'll call you yeah. from now on. It makes it makes the Rosemary stuff from. Um... TNA look from Impact looked like fucking barbarian, which I know me and Matty watching is a oh. really cracking horror show. How good is it, JP? Very, very Impact. good show. That use yeah, of a yeah. Donovan song, Ricky Tiki. <laughs> it's fucking brilliant as well, but I won't go into that. Uh, well, there we go. We've got a title as well, Fluorescent Wank. We're sorted. <laughs> Same with the recap. Go. Apple might have something to say about it, the others. Yeah. 